So the Vampire Facelift and the Vampire Facial are trademarked by Dr. Charles Runnels. He is the inventor of the technique. And so the names can only be used by certified and trained professionals as a collaboration with the American Association of Cellular Medicine. He's the president of it, and it helps with further research related to uh, platelet um, rich plasma. So the differences between the facelift and the uh, facial are primarily that the PRP, which is the pl platelet rich plasma, is placed on top in a facial after the face is microneedled. And with a facelift, it is actually injected with the adjunct of a hyaluronic acid to certain areas of the face to improve beauty. What I mean by beauty is the topographical map of beauty. So it's a, um, every attractive face, regardless of race, has this element. You can put the topographical map on any attractive features and it will align with those faces. It's a mathematical um, description and includes other four elements such as shape, colour, texture and size. So unfortunately size does matter under these circumstances, especially with the lips. So um, the facelift, we um, carefully and intelligently inject facial filler, so hyaluronic acid, into certain areas after discussing this with the patient. And then we improve the volume, the elasticity, the texture and the colour by adding the platelets, which have growth hormone and are activated so that it improves um, fat deposition, improves um, collagen elasticity and increases blood vessel formation in these areas. So effectively it's not a surgical facelift so the price tag is to match. Uh, we're not talking thousands of pounds but we are talking a high price related to the fact that it is a professionally marketed tool. Um, the pros as well, it has immediate effect. You find that patients definitely um, can see the difference immediately and it, it maintains for a while afterwards. You can put makeup on straight away afterwards and you can carry on with your daily activity without any issues whatsoever. The cons are really related to stinging and possibly mild bruising. They're about the only two main things. As long as you use the correct technique and don't overdo the procedure, there should be no issues whatsoever. Of course, we see every patient, we take a medical history, look at um, their uh, um, alcohol smoking lifestyle issues and then we can uh, advise them accordingly. There are some patients such as those who have allergy to hyaluronic acid or are on certain drugs which um, thin the blood uh, or if the patient has anemia we cannot do this procedure at all. So rather than having things go wrong we preempt all of the issues associated. During the procedure, once we've ascertained that that's what we're going to be doing, we place the patient on the, on the bed, we give them topical anaesthetic. This is to help, it's a strong anaesthetic. It takes about 10 to 20 minutes to work. We then take blood from, the, from them, about 30 mils from one of their um, arms, and we centrifuge the blood down. So the idea is to separate the blood from the plasma and the gold fluid at the top of the syringe is the plasma and that we remove. To get the plasma we literally need about 30 mils, gives us about two and a half mils of plasma at the end of the centrifuge. 
process. That can last up to six hours, so we give that to the patient to hold on to. It's their blood, it's their property. So we will never get it mixed up with any other person's blood anywhere. The While the centrifuge is going, we then identify areas on the face, patient's face where we can improve the beautification process. So usually these happen to be the cheeks, uh, the lips possibly, and probably the eyebrows. So we're looking at that element of um, the E-line, making sure that the, the line between the nose and the chin is in alignment and the upper lip is about two to three millimeters away from that line with the lower lip being a little bit closer. So we can basically use the hyaluronic acid to help with contouring um, and volumization. Practically, we're sculpting the face. We then apply and give the, inject the two and a half mils or so of activated platelet-rich plasma. And we place them in certain areas on the face to help with the enhancements of um, the hyaluronic acid. Um, so that's basically in a nutshell what uh, we do with the patient without giving too much of the trade secrets away. Um, it can hurt, uh, that is another question on the list. Um, it stings. The stinging element uh, is not related to actually injection, uh, injecting with a needle, it's actually the fluid itself can cause uh, a stinging reaction when activated and placed into the, into the skin itself. So there is an element of that, but a lot of patients might feel it, some patients feel it a lot less than others. And we have a slight asymmetry in our face. That means that one side of our face tends to be more painful or more sensitive to pain than the other side. So, but it's very minimal and it doesn't last at all. Very simple. You can walk out of the clinic, put a bit of makeup on and go back to your normal activity duties. There is some redness on your skin, which will decrease with time within a few minutes to a few hours. And there may be some bruising related to the fact that the PRP can sometimes have red blood cells accumulated in it, and that can cause a slight bruising effect on the skin. Um, again, can be uh, removed by uh, or uh, camouflaged by makeup, so not a problem. There will be a bit of swelling. Obviously, we've injured the face, so there is going to be a bit of swelling, but the swelling will subside in time, usually within two to seven days. And at the end of that procedure, um, seven days, you get the effect that you're looking for. The difference is you can walk out. There is no downtime as such. Well, the what we're trying to do is improve on volumization and contouring to get that beautification of the face. Uh, what we don't do is uh, stop time. So the aging process per person is still the same regardless. How you age and your lifestyle is what effectively enhances how long the vampire facelift will um, last for. Most people should be about 12 to 15 months before they realize that there's they need something else. But this is usually not related to the fact that the products have decreased, but more so with the aging process. We cannot stop that. Um, if you smoke, if you drink a lot of alcohol, all of those will obviously in, uh, prevent the longevity of the action of the PRP and the hyaluronic acid. 
So unfortunately, it's not going to last as long as somebody who is a lot healthier in their diet. Also, longevity is enhanced by aftercare of the skin. So you want to use creams that enhance your skin, um, such as retinol A. And we also suggest face um, facelifts, not faces, sorry, facials regularly, sort of every three to six months. And that can be a vampire facial or it can be a skin peel or any of the above. Um, um, or even a laser deep cleansing peel. So any of those elements can be used about three months after the initial facelift and all of that enhances and lengthens the procedure time. Sorry, not the procedure time, the length of time that the facelift will last. To be honest with you, we've got Bara Fali, uh, Rupert Everett, and of course the famous Kim Kardashian West, all of whom actually have had the vampire facial. So that's when they come out looking completely red and they've had the PRP put on their face. I have to say that uh, Kim Kardashian was not very excited to be the face of of this um, treatment initially and subsequently took Charles Reynolds to court over it. But her sister actually loves the treatment and um, one of her sisters uh, and has it done regularly. A vampire facial, I would say you need to have every three months for the first year and then six monthly and then possibly yearly after that.